this is Marlene Rabu from uh, Batam. Uh, I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Sela Sadakau from uh, Vatukola. I only listen to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Vale and I'm working at Golden Crown Resort and I love listening to Gold FM because it plays a really wide range of classic I'm Sein Isakio from Kashmir Lotoka. I like Gold FM, but only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Jackie Spade. This is FBC News. Tonight, opposition whip Rato Isoti Koda under fire for making prejudiced statements about Muslims. Prime Minister Rubbish's calls for debate with Sadal Balida. And Police Commissioner visits Natandola for murder investigations. Debate on the 2017 budget turned nasty today as opposition whip Ratu Isor Tikova made prejudiced statements about Muslims. Ratu Isor took the bigoted path, accusing the Minister for Economy, Ayah Said Kayum, for, quote, leading the nation with his kind and giving jobs to only people of the Islamic faith. Ali Kimbia reports. The five basic essentials of life. Ratu Isor Tikova's speech had little to do with the budget and more to do with religious prejudice. The concentration of economic power seems to be with a few elite. There is animosity growing within our various Fijian groups questioning why this elite group is being advanced over others. The fury with the stigma of one man leading the nation with his kind. The people of Fiji have started to build misconceptions about others within his group. The Sodelpa member then read out a list of around names of those he accused of being appointed to key positions in the government because they shared the same faith as the Minister for Economy. Mohamed Sanim, the Supervisor of Elections, Permanent Representative to the United Nations in Geneva, Nazad Samim, and Permanent Secretary for Industry and Trade, Sain Ali, were also accused of being appointed without merit. Government Whip, Asnil Sudakar, demanded that Ratu Isoa withdraw his bygoded comments. Honorable, 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 uh, honorable Deputy Speaker, uh, Order 62, Rule 4, says that there cannot be any imputation that, ra that raises uh, uh, animosity between different ethnic or religious groups. The Honorable uh, uh, Deputy Whip has just mentioned he con continues to rule with his kind. What is, what is he trying to imply? Honorable Deputy Speaker, he is not listening to what I said. Madam, Honorable Speaker, Ministry of Economy has direct oversight over the strategic sectors. So the strategic sectors has a CEO. And I'm merely mentioning that. That's kind. it. He said with his kind. That's it. The word, was, the word that was used was with but his kind. But what are you afraid of? With what are you kind. afraid of? What, what is quite that? clear that we are witnessing a coup within a coup. The economy minister, in his closing remarks, also hit out at numerous personal attacks made against him. They have personalized matters. Honorable Tikoza, who is not here, read out the names of selective people because they are of the Muslim faith. He forgot to mention the names of other people, of other faiths, of other ethnicities. He selectively did that. Why? Because, Madam, uh, Honorable Deputy Speaker, I'll tell you why. Because the reared his 1987 head again, led by the leader of their party who sits outside this parliament. And unfortunately, uh, Honorable Deputy Speaker, the Honorable Leader of Opposition, who is inside this parliament, also joined the fray. Also joined the fray by personalizing matters. Ratu Isoa was warned by Deputy Speaker Ruveni Nandalo to refrain from any comments that may raise ethnic or religious tension and animosity. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. We now cross over live to Parliament to Ali Kimbia, who will be talking to the Prime Minister about this very pertinent issue, which has obviously shocked many. Aliki. The Honourable Prime Minister, I thank you for speaking uh, with FBC News. Just in regards to the sort of comments made by the opposition whip, Ratu Iso uh, on the religious belief of the Minister of Economy, has this shocked Parliament? Um. <clears throat> Uh, the, the public at large will have, uh, will have uh, found out that uh, this is the norm with Tikoda. He comes in and uh, spews his uh, poison and uh, venom 
on the parliament floor and it disappears like he did today uh, without uh, before before uh, the, the 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 government or the, the Fiji First Party uh, makes a challenge to his uh, his uh, comments, but that's uh, that's typical of Tigada, and uh, he's a and you can sum it up by saying that he's a pathetic man. He's doing he's coming up with a lot of uh, pathetic exercise in trying to justify uh, what he once done in Parliament. But I also think he's a very frustrated man because he's got a case in 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 court to do with corruption, and maybe he's. Uh, He's hitting out at everyone, but especially the Attorney General. I think the reason why he's attacking the Attorney General is, is uh, not envious, not only envious of the Attorney General, he's jealous of the Attorney General, what the Attorney General can do, which he can't do. And I think that's a bottom line here. He's, uh, he's a very jealous, frustrated man. And uh, I remember listening to his last comments, he's talking about uh, the uh, SDL, when they come and come into power, they will look at corruption. I think that's apt because uh, the court right now is looking into corruption case, uh, which is alleged to have done. What sort, what sort of things needs to be done in order to stop this kind of comments? Because I believe it, if it continues, it will stir up religious differences. Well, if it continues, it's going to get removed from parliament. That's for sure. But I think. Uh, He's got his party to, to take care of that. They need to advise him and talk to him. Uh, otherwise, uh, again, in one of these parliament sitting, there'll be one shot. I believe you would also want to comment on the opposition MPs uh, calling out on a debate with even. Yes, uh, there's been uh, a call from uh, Salo Terenrondo and uh, Mbulitabo for me to have a debate with the leader. Uh, Rambuka. My answer to that is uh, he's the leader of the party outside of parliament. He's irrelevant to me. He's nothing. He may be their leader, but there's nothing in this parliament. He's got nothing uh, going for him in here. Maybe when he stands for uh, when he stands for election and then we'll have an opportunity to, to sit and debate. But I'm saying if we do sit and debate Bulitabo and Rondondo should be there to assist him because uh, I will take him to the cleaners. Because really, he's got nothing to give to Fiji. I will let the people know what he did in 87 and the, uh, and, uh, the aftermath of uh, the, the effect of what happened in 87 and what they did in 87. But not only that, I want to tell Sudelpa they picked the wrong leader. But then again, uh, I'm in no position to be telling them to pick a leader because they really don't have anybody out there who can be a leader, a decisive leader. Uh, he's got nothing to offer Fiji, not yesterday, not today, certainly not tomorrow. There you have it, the Honorable Prime Minister Wurenge Bainamarama, Jackie. Inak. Thanks so much for that, Aliki. The Prime Minister says Sitiveni Rambuka's performance on FBC TV's weekend current affairs show for the record was pathetic. Vorenge Mbaini Marama, who watched the much talked about interview, has suggested that Rambuka was not telling the truth during the interview. Amongst many controversial and contradictory statements made in the interview, Rambuka refused to divulge the names of the people that were the shadowy figures involved with him in our country's first coup in 1987. Uh, it was pathetic. It was a pathetic interview. He couldn't answer any questions because uh, it would uh, uh, get him to lie. Uh, commanders don't lie. You can watch the For the Record Rambuka interview tomorrow night at 10 p.m. on FBC TV. Calls by the opposition for the Prime Minister to have a live TV debate with the newly appointed leader of Sedelpa has been rubbish by the man in question. Vorenge Mbaini Marama says Sitiveni Rambuka is nothing and has nothing to offer Fiji. I call upon the Fiji First Party leader and the Honorable Prime Minister Commodore Mbaini Marama to have a public debate on television with the Sudelpa Party leader Major General Sitiveni Rambuka <laughs> on the programs for the benefit of all people anytime soon, Madam Speaker. May I request the Honorable Prime Minister, sir, 
if the same could also be, if you could also avail yourself for the same interview with Adwin Mand at the FBC TV to be asked the same questions. Nambuko is nothing right now. He's, he's nobody. He's irrelevant in this house. He's not a member of parliament. Uh, maybe when he stands for parliament, then he can have a debate with me. But uh, why can't they have a debate with me? But they, they're pushing him to that uh, stand as if he's got something to offer Fiji. Rambuka has nothing to offer Fiji right now. Not now, not ever. Attorney General and Minister of Economy Ayo Said Kayum has called the level of the debate on the new national budget pathetic. Said Kayum says the performance by the opposition over the last two days has been disappointing. Ellen Stalls has the story. It is a pathetic display. The Attorney General Ayo Said Kayum says there were inconsistencies in the opposition's argument, coupled with personal attacks. They have come to this debate and have personally attacked me. They have obfuscated figures. They have made a big shenanigan about economy. The point of order was then raised by opposition MP Professor Biman Prasad, who asked the minister to stick to the budget, saying Said Kayum was playing the race card. There are members of parliament on this side. They have the right to raise issues. And the attorney general and the minister for economy has the right to reply to them. Why is he dragging me there? In his right of reply, the minister corrected arguments put forward by opposition MPs on issues such as taxes, appointments of civil servants, national debt and economic growth, to name a few. For the 2016 calendar year, the economy is expected to grow by 2.4%. The impact of the 2016-27 budget is expected to further raise this growth. The projected 2.4% growth is a remarkable achievement in itself given the devastating effects of T.C. Winston. The minister further clarified that debt as a proportion of GDP has been declining, hovering around 53% in 2006 and stood at around 46.3% at the end of last year. The debt to GDP ratio for 2016-2017 is projected to be 50.4%. This figure includes the 4.7% net fiscal deficit resulting from the additional expenditure of $207.9 million specifically for T.C. Winston Rehabilitation. If this important one-off expenditure is excluded, the projected deficit for 2016-2017 would be 2.6%. He continues to say that the people need to know that the Fiji First government is risk-conscious when it comes to borrowing. Ellen Stalls, FBC News. Opposition MP William Ngavoka alleges the 2016-2017 national budget is not revolutionary. Ngavoka says the budget does not address current pressing issues in the country. Ali Kimbia has more. As the 2016 and 2017 budget focuses on recovery works after tropical cyclone Winston, opposition MP William Ngavoka has claims that there is nothing in the budget that deals with everyday issue. There's nothing in there that addresses this pressing problem about disparity in earning power. And if you don't address it, Madam Speaker, it'll continue to be the elephant in the house and will continue to bring division and ultimately grief in our country. That would be stupidity and a sign of no vision. However, Prime Minister Burenge Mbainimarama has stated that the budget does not give people the choice to solely focus on the recovery process, but government has soldered all the responsibilities. We have not asked the Fijian people to choose, from, uh, to choose between recovering from Winston and remaining on a solid course for the future. We must do both, and we have done both. We have not asked the few people to pay for repairs today in exchange for years of stagnant growth in the future. Mm -hmm. That would be a fool's choice. Mbani Marama says apart from the budget, the Fiji First government has a track record of consistency and if the people were given the choice to decide on the budget, it would be a breach of faith. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. Coming up on FBC News, we have more from the budget debate in Parliament and Fiji Police Force gets 26 new vehicles. Stay with us.
My name is Freddy, I'm uh, from Gamiaton. I listen to Mario on the traffic jam in the afternoon. Hi, my name is Sala, I live in Asino. Today FM rocks. My name is Denasa and I'm from Lutoka and I love listening to Today FM. My name is Mulamila, I work at Golden Point Resort. I love listening to Today FM, it rocks in Rakiraki. I'm Mary from Mandera. I love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. We love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. Welcome back. This is FBC News. In Parliament today, the Minister for Health and Medical Services, Chonio Somate, said the government supports the ministry in helping all Fijians live a healthy life. Sainian Boiler reports. I have the pleasure. Usamate said the 2016-27 national budget shows the government pays a lot of attention to health and medical services. For me, as a Minister of Health, is something like I really appreciate is its emphasis on human resources. This year, they will be focused on our doctors. This year, we'll be looking at uh, at least increasing their salaries by between 56 to 81 percent because they are very important components. Usamati responded to some speeches in Parliament today that stated that the health budget has gone down. The budget has not gone down. Within the health, within the budget for this year, we now have 244 million within the health uh, budget of the Ministry of Health. But in addition to that, we have another 41 million dollars just for the doctors, which will be governed by the Ministry of Civil Service. If you add those figures up together, it adds to more than 285 million. He added the problem of retaining our doctors will now be solved, has increased doctors' salaries a part of the social services reform. Usamate added the Ministry of Health and Medical Services fully supports the 2016-2017 national budget. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. Opposition MP Prem Singh today raised questions on the allocation made to the Fiji Roads Authority in the national budget. Singh says over $2.7 billion has been allocated to FRA in the last three years. An infrastructure minister failed to inform the parliament on how much money has been utilized on construction of roads, bridges and jetties. He says the government has failed to construct two bridges which have been closed for almost four years and they are seeking justification on the allocation. Despite the colossal funding, FRA failed to regular, regularly check the state of the Tapavoa EY bridge in the last four years. A bridge that is the only link to our VT level from the capital where Queen's Road. The FRA admitted that the bridge was last inspected four years ago. This is height of irresponsibility. The Minister of Infrastructure, Praveen Kumar, informed the Parliament yesterday that since its inception in 2013, the Fiji Roads Authority has built six new bridges and five jetties, including the 190-metre Ngarani jetty. The Fiji Roads Authority has been allocated $527.2 million in the new budget. Tourism Minister Fayaz Koya today corrected opposition MP Moses Mbulitavu for listing the Director of Public Prosecutions under the Attorney General's ministerial portfolio. Koya says the opposition has once again failed to disseminate the correct information. In a statement today, Director of Public Prosecutions Christopher Pride clarified that Mbulitavu's claims were not true. Pride adds that the DPP is an independent and non-political office. The opposition has gone to the media and made claims that the Honourable Minister for Economy heads nine ministerial portfolios, which, Madam Speaker, is incorrect. The opposition lacks understanding of government processes and demarcation between ministries and independent entities such as the DPP's office, Judiciary, Fiji's Elections Office and FICAC. It is a shame that Honourable Bulitavu, being a lawyer, failed to understand the difference. Pride also says all decisions made are done so by the DPP alone, without interference or in consultations with the Attorney General or any minister or the government. Agriculture Minister Inia Serratu says his ministry has spent $2.4 million on recovery efforts following tropical cyclone Winston. Serratu says the recovery efforts include the mobilization of staff as well as the distribution of planting materials, livestock and light machinery. He says the farms are recovering slowly as vegetable prices have been decreasing.
These have translated into the restoration of food for our people as well as for organized markets. For certain products that are now reflected in falling prices from the heights they reached immediately in early March. This has been possible from the Ministry's strategy to appropriate production from non-affected areas to substitute for losses anticipated from affected localities. Cerro Rato also says his ministry has already made a bid for $15 million from the $23 million that the European Union plans to give to the agriculture sector. Another body part found at Nutandola Beach in Singatoka yesterday is being tested to see if it matches with other parts found last week. As the investigation into the apparent murder of the Russian couple continues, Police Commissioner Brigadier General Siti Veningilio was at the well-known picnic spot today. Akusita Thale has more. Police and Navy divers are scouring the waters of Natandola Beach looking for more remains that may belong to Russians Yuri and Natalia Shipulin. They will be conducting a uh, grid search of the seabed around the area where the, the recent finds uh, have been discovered. Eh? Uh, in regards to the most recent body part uh, that has been recovered, we will have to go through DNA testing uh, for that to confirm if it's uh, part of the, the previous body parts that were recovered. Uh, apart from that, it'd be uh, premature to make any comments on the conduct of investigations at, at the moment. Brigadier General Ngili Ho says they will be sending updates of the case through the Foreign Affairs Ministry to the Russian consulate. Making any further comments uh, would probably jeopardize the conduct of investigation. That is all we are looking into. Eh? What were they doing here? Uh, what form of investment? Uh, what, uh, what they brought into the country or what they were taking out of the country? So we can't talk on that at the moment. That, that's all part of the investigation process. Yesterday's discovery was wrapped in a manner similar to the body parts found last week. All of the pieces are at Lautoka as forensic testing continues. Akusita Tali, FBC News. Fiji can expect a more effective service from the Fiji Police Force after receiving 26 new leased vehicles in Suva this morning. The vehicles are in addition to the 33 vehicles they received last month. The force now has a total of 199 vehicles, 32 owned outright by the department and the rest leased. Police Commissioner Brigadier General Siti Veningilio says the new vehicles should deter complaints about service. People are starting to call us up now that we are reacting more quickly to their reports and things like that. And that's, that's what we are here for. To, to deliver that service to, to the public. Yeah, that's what they can expect. And I know the public expectations now rises even further uh, with the vehicles. Sports is up next. Here's Jamie with all the very latest. Nakazaki and good evening. In sports after the break, Team Fiji ready for Melanesian Games. And under 17 footballers in press coats. This and more coming up. आपको करगंगा के रंजिला का नमस्कार रेडियो फिजी की सुंदर सुंदर यादों का खजाना एकदम बचपन के दिन याद करा देते हैं हमारा नाम जोनी नाइडो है हम रहता है मलोलो में और हम टैक्सी ड्राइवर है हम सब टाइम अपन टैक्सी में रेडियो फिजी टू सुनता करते हैं हम सिंगाचोका के हैं हमारा नाम है रोजी हम यहां पे रेडियो फिजी टू सुनता राम राम मैं रेम प्रसाद बोलता हूं तब बताऊं मैं कोई रहता हूं मैं जब ही सुना रेडियो फिजी टू ही सुनता हूं रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन Close to 250 athletes will represent Fiji at the Melanesian Games which start in Suva on Thursday. This will be the largest Fiji contingent at the Games since their inception in 2001. Rohit Deo tells us more. The final touch is being applied before the start of the Melanesian Games on Thursday, with it also being the last chance for athletes of Melanesia to qualify for next month's Rio Olympics in Brazil. Um, there's the Fiji uh, Open uh, A team, the Fiji uh, B Open team, and then we've got a Fiji Under 18 team. Apart from those vying for a sport at next month's Rio Olympics, there will be hundreds of secondary school students who will get exposed to international competition for the very first time. Two or three guys that come in, uh, they found their way here to, uh, on uh, Monday morning, they were here. We had a young gentleman come from Benga, he was here on Monday morning. Uh, two young ladies coming all the way from Kandavu, uh, they also were here first thing yesterday morning. So uh, we have good repetition, we've got uh, a big number that come in from, from the West. Team Fiji has set high standards for its athletes, 
with an aim to win more medals compared to the Pacific Games last year. I'm very hopeful and optimistic that uh, Chopin Save Athletics Fiji can win uh, as much as medals as Fiji won at the uh, last uh, recent uh, Pacific Games or even more. The official opening takes place tomorrow, while the games proper begin at the ANZ Stadium on Thursday. Rohit Deo, BC Sports. Meanwhile, for 18-year-old para-athlete Api Melek in Role, these Melanesian games will be his first international meet. Role will take part in the 100 and 200 meter sprints. The Nasikawa Vision College student has faced a lot of challenges preparing, but says he is ready. Sometimes when I have no bus fare to take me to my training venue, it did not stop me. So I have to walk despite of my disability. I pray to God to help me in achieving my dream. The Melanesian Games will be held over three days starting Thursday. The Fiji Regional Academy Under-17 side held the Rewa Youth Under-18 team to a one-all draw over the weekend. The Under-17 team has been in camp for five months now, preparing for the Oceania playoffs next year. Rohit Deo caught up with coach Selen Lal and filed this report. The match against the Rewa Youth side showed what can be expected when a team is in camp for months. Coach Selen Lal is impressed with the result. For the first time, I think uh, these boys they were able to play in front of... Uh, big crowd and uh, as for the performance I think uh, the boys uh, they did uh, great uh, playing against Rewa Youth. Uh, Rewa is uh, a champion team uh, in the youth league and uh, playing against them at Ratita Combo Park uh, was a, a pleasure for the boys. Well says playing against a team like Rewa helped him identify the weak areas. We have got areas to work on. Uh, we were able to rectify the, the problems uh, with the coaching panel. I think we'll be concentrating on those areas before we play other build-up matches. The side resumes training today to prepare for the next match in the Youth League. They are also expected to play friendly matches against the Premier District teams. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. The Fiji Sevens men's and women's rugby teams have received a financial boost of $20,000 through the Road to Gold campaign. The Harry Punza Group has come on board to assist travel costs and preparations for the upcoming Rio Olympic Games. The cheque was received by the Prime Minister and Fiji Rugby Union President Vorenge Mbainimarama from the Director and Chairman of the Harry Punja Group, Harry Punja. Uh, thank you, Harry. I want to thank you for this. This uh, uh, very kind donation that will go towards uh, our team uh, in their preparation to gold. Thank you very much. Yeah, I wish, uh, I think oh, yeah. <laughs> Ready for gold. <laughs> The seventh competition at the Olympic Games begin on the 6th of next month. The Welsh football team faces its biggest test in history when they meet Portugal in the European Championships semi-finals on Thursday. The match will also see two players from the richest club in the world going head-to-head. -head. Wales take on Portugal in the first semi-final at 7 a.m. on Thursday. That's it from sports this evening. Business is up next with Jackie. The Biosecurity Authority of Fiji is now issuing electronic certification for all commercial exports of plants and plant products from Fiji. This is in line with the Fiji Agricultural Organization's International Plant Protection Convention. Executive Chair Xavier Ria says this will reduce attempts of fraudulent practices as the enhanced security features inbuilt in the system will prevent any tampering forging or amending of the e-certificates. He says certification errors will also decrease with the use of database. Cooling cloudy conditions with scattered showers was the order of the day across the nation. Temperatures were about the same everywhere. Lombasa was the warmest at 32 degrees, while Ba was at 31. The rest of the centres were cool in the higher 20s. Tomorrow looks much the same as today, with a bit of sunshine, cloudy skies and light occasional showers about the southern and eastern parts of the country. And looking ahead to Thursday, the damp wet conditions will continue. At sea, southeast winds gusting up to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. Recapping the main stories for tonight, opposition whip Ratui Sotikova under fire for making prejudiced statements about Muslims. Prime Minister rubbishes calls for debate with Sadelpa leader and police commissioner visits Natandola for murder investigations. 
For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. On to this week's poll question, we are asking, should Fiji host a Super Rugby match every year? To answer, visit our FBC website. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Jackie Spade. Good night. Bula FM, number 2 and Seri.